this morning? Can you guys hear me? There we go. Good morning, everybody. We've got a full packed house this morning. <laughs> this is great to see. Uh, at first, I couldn't tell if it was just because people were moved up toward the front or if we actually had more people, but it looks like we really do have more people this morning. So, Welcome uh, to Bonner Springs United Methodist Church. Uh, I'm Patrick Fager, filling in for Charles Grant. Uh, this is Pastor Catherine over here. Pastor Andy is, I'm sure, on his way. Um, yeah, and Gene and I, our wonderful pianist there with our uh, prelude. Um, and good morning to everyone worshiping online this morning on Facebook. So, uh, you guys may notice I look a little bit different. Um, I've got a new new haircut this morning. It's I went in, went all in, for a Halloween costume this year. Uh, it's not an Andy costume, so don't, that's not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> it kind of looks that way. I realized that this morning, but that's not what I was doing. Um, so ask me after service if you want to know what the actual costume is. I don't have many announcements for you this morning, so you don't have to listen to me talk for very long. But the one thing um, that I have is a community problems assembly. We mentioned this last week. Uh, is coming up on the 3rd, so that's Thursday, um, this the Thursday night at the Kansas City Community Church of God on Leavenworth Road. So if you guys are interested in being part of that um, gathering, um, be sure and check that out. Um, and it's 5901 Leavenworth Road, so I'm sure you guys can look that up again if you need to. So that's the only thing that I have, but I've told that Phyllis has a an announcement for us this morning. Phyllis, there she is. <coughs> Good morning. I know a lot of you by face, but not always by name. My name's Phyllis Lorian, if you don't know me. I want to introduce you, ladies, and invite you to a social group that we have here at the church that you may or may not be aware of. It's called Creative Fellowship. You don't have to be creative to come, okay? I am not creative. Give me a pattern, I can do anything. But I'm not creative, but I come. I sew, so I bring my sewing machine usually, and I work on a project. Uh, we started out by making hats for Children's Mercy, and COVID put a stop to that. Some people crochet, and they bring their projects. Some people do other things. Sometimes I don't feel like doing anything, but just being there and visiting. So I don't bring my machine. I don't bring anything but a cup of coffee. We're a social group, and we'd love to have more of you come Get to know us and let us get to know you. Sometimes we work on projects for the church. Sometimes we don't. But it's a good chance to get away for an hour and a half by yourself. We meet the third Tuesday of the month. Is that right, Mary? Third Tuesday of the month from 7 to 8.30. Come and do what you want. If you're a craft person, bring your craft. You'll probably end up teaching somebody else a craft. Me, I love to do crafts. But we just want to let you know that we're here, and we'd love to have you come and join us. And I think, when, Mary, when's our next meeting? It's on my calendar, which is back with Craig. I'll have it put in the bulletin. That I want to do is have these meetings put in the bulletin so that you can remember. And if you want to come, we want you to come. So please do. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis. All right, um, so I think that's all that we have for announcements this morning. So if you will stand and greet your neighbors in the love and peace of Christ.
on there? There we go. All right. So now we are ready to sing our opening hymn, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, number 462 in the hymnal or right up here on the screen. Amen. You guys can be seated.
Amen. That was beautiful, guys. Thank you. Uh, I now like to invite our children to come forward for our children's time. everybody. How are you guys today? Can you guys say hi to everyone out there? Tell them to wake up. Hi. Good morning. We're so glad you guys are here. Well, my name is Pastor Catherine, and some of you guys know that. And, oh, you made something? A cross? That's super cool. Church has barely started, and you're already making awesome things. Oh, oh, even better. Thank you so much. Andy and I love that sort of thing. Well, how is everyone doing today? Good. Good? Raise your hand if you're excited for Halloween. Awesome. Oh, wow, that's great. Well, today, I'm dressed up as Chase. you are dressed up as Chase from Paw Patrol. You are very right. Well, today, um, I want to talk a little bit about what Jesus can do to our heart. Who knows where your heart is? Can you point to it? Okay, what does your heart do? Can anyone tell me? Okay. It pumps, it pumps blood to every part of your body. It pumps blood to every part of your body. You guys are so smart. Yeah, did you have something? And it also keeps you alive. And keeps you alive. That is very true. Okay, well, you know what I was thinking about? Have you guys ever woken up and been in a bad mood? Yeah. Yeah. Every day. Every day. <laughs> Your dad woke you up at 6 o'clock? Yeah. Oh, dad. Because he's a firefighter and he had to go save lives. Oh, dad. <laughs> That's awesome. And you had a bad dream last year? Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am very sorry. See? Even as kids and grown-ups, do we ever wake up and our hearts feel kind of angry or bad? Or the word I like to use is hardened or frozen. Or cranky. or cranky, yeah. Well, today I brought something interesting with me. How many of you guys like ice? Like, okay, now here's a weird question. My husband, Andy, he likes to do something that's a, a pet peeve for me. He likes to chew ice. Does anyone... You guys like to do that? No, you're not chewing my, my eyes here. Um, I think it hurts your teeth. Dentists would say probably don't. But what I think is interesting about ice is that what happens when the ice is held? What will happen if I hold this long enough? It'll start to melt. The Bible talks a lot about Jesus being the light of the world. If we put light, watch this, it's even starting to drip here. If we put some flame next to this ice, what would happen? It's melt. You guys see how it's already melting just in Pastor Catherine's hand? If we put Jesus' light, it would melt even faster. Sometimes when we wake up in those cranky moods or when we're having a rough day, it's kind of like our heart is frozen. We're kind of stuck and grumpy and our heart is hardened to God and other people. But when we go to God in prayer, we can even ask God to soften our heart, to make our hearts warm again. Do you guys believe that's possible? Here, you guys, you guys want to, here, pass this. See if, pass, see if it melts a little bit in your hand. Yeah? Here you go. You like it? Don't eat it, please, because this is, I don't want to eat our community-held ice. But if you want to try to touch that, and then pass it to someone else. What's also cool is Christ, what do you think is better at, at melting the ice? The, the fire of Jesus 
Do you think that melts quicker if I would put a, a light on it, like a flame, or do you think our hands would melt it quicker? Which one? The fire. The fire, right. So Jesus is always the one that can melt our hands the quickest. But did you notice who else is, who else or, that can melt our heart the quickest? But who else can melt it? Yeah, you guys can also cause it to, to, to soften, right? Yeah. To melt. Did you know that Jesus' light is in you too? I know, it's crazy. <laughs> it's okay to go, huh? And so when you come across people who are having a hard day or whose hearts feel hardened, did you know that if you are kind to them, you can help their hearts to melt too? Yeah, it's super cool. Jesus gave us that superpower. It's awesome. So I want you guys to think about this week. If you wake up grumpy or just having a hard time, remember that Jesus, you can say, Jesus, please help me to soften my heart. And if you meet somebody who's having a grumpy time or who's feeling angry, do you know what? You can help them soften their heart too by being kind and showing Jesus' love. Does that sound good? So when you have ice this week, that's what I want you to think about. That's your challenge, all right? Now you're going to eat it. Let's pray, okay? And praying is the way we talk to God. So we'll just say a quick prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you can always soften our hearts. Some days we'll be grumpy or we'll have an attitude or we'll be sad or scared. But you can warm our hearts and make us feel better. Help us to always go to you and help us to help other people's hearts feel better too. Amen. Amen. All right. You guys go on back and have some great time in Sunday school in the nursery. All right, as they make their ways back um, to the nursery. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Let me put this back. <clears throat> There's also water, so I'm watching where I'm stepping that way, too. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> uh, good morning, all. I don't know if you know this. You probably do, but today is Confirmation Sunday, and we have um, nine youth who have spent this fall going through Confirmation, learning about the Bible, learning about Jesus, learning about what other things, Confirmands, what other things did we learn about? Thank Jesus. Good church answer. We learned about um, the church and uh, all kinds of things. We've um, spent a couple nights together. We have um, gone and visited other churches and other faith communities. And today, we get to celebrate that. So we um, created a little video for you guys um, talking about what uh, faith means to our um, youth. And so we're going to play that, and then I have two others that want to share their brave, feeling brave, and they're going to stand up here and share, so they'll share right after this video. I'm Nicholas Burning, and my interests are sports and video games because I like to be active and doing things a lot. It means making a decision to learn more about God and come to this church and be a part of church activities. My name is Justin Corvo, and I'm interested in basketball and football. It means to me that you learn and commit your life to Jesus and God. 
My name's Olivia, and I like movies and Harry Potter and history. Placing my trust in the Lord and trying to be my best self. Faith keeps me steady. I'm Ben, and I love to spray paint. I live with my brother, sister, mom, and dad. And I really like to ride bikes. During my time of confirmation, I learned to ride a bike. I put in enough effort to ride a bike so I can easily put in more to be confirmed. Yes, riding bikes are fun, but being confirmed will mean more. Your life is based on your faith. It can give you the strength, confidence, and perseverance you need. Faith tries, faith ties to confirmation because it's a big step in your life, and I'm ready to take that step. My name is Isabel, and my hobbies are drawing, baking, slash cooking, and softball. Com commitment to Christ is saying that you want to learn more and you're really interested in Christ. My faith matters because I strongly believe in Christ. I'm making a decision to go on with my life and keep learning about Christ. Hi, I'm Cameron Jagel. I'm Cameron Jagel and I'm interested in trucks because when I break them, I can fix them. My Christ means that I can talk to God. It means that I have the option to talk to God. Next up, we have Alex, who's going to come and share his testimony. Uh, hello, uh, my name's Alex, or Alexander. Um, I've been doing scouts in the church since I was in first grade, and I'm in our confirmation class. Um, on Friday, we met for our lock-in here, and we had a few questions, and I just, I picked why faith matters to me. Um, faith matters because it's a, like, guidance in your life. It, um, so now I'm listening to that one. I, you can think of, like, a trail. It. It's like a dark trail that you can't, s life is like a dark trail that you can't see the stumps that come until they're right in front of you. And there's f many forks in the road, but your faith is like a small wire guiding you through this path. And see, that, that rope gives you guidance on where you should be and who you should be with and hang out around. But nothing's stopping you from letting go to the stream. You can let go and take your own path. It's going, the path that you take on your own will be harder, but you will still make it through. Uh, I feel like this is the experience for a lot of us. We grab that string and then we hit the, one of the forks in the road. And God tells us what the best path should be, but we don't believe it. So we let go and take our own path until we eventually reach that string again. But sometimes this isn't a bad thing. Sometimes this is a learning experience. But what's to say the string wasn't real all along? Maybe God isn't real, but so long as we believe it, it gives us that path to take. The string doesn't have to be phys physically be there. It just has to be, we just have to believe that it's there. And we have to believe it's leading us down the right path, the path of being good to people and loving each other in times of sorrow and, and grievance, in times of us all thriving. So I want to leave you with the question today of what your string is, what your faith is, and what you believe the right path is. You're, you're great. Uh, 
Good word, man. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Max. Okay, mine's going to sound lame compared to that because that was amazing. Um, <laughs> well, most of you probably know my name's Max. Um, just a couple of my interests. I'm very interested in music. I sing. I listen to music. I even play a couple instruments. I'm also very interested in art, specifically drawing and sketching. Um, so you also know that I am getting confirmed today, and I just wanted to share some of my thoughts on what confirmation means to me. So I feel that with confirmation, I am making the decision to commit to believing in Christ and believing in heaven. I don't feel like confirmation is a time to change who I am, but rather to allow God to change me through experiences and allow him to help me choose the right thing through hard decisions, also easy decisions, because I have troubles with decision making. <laughs> I feel like nervous, but also very excited to make the commitment of confirmation. I feel like I'm ready to dedicate my life to believing in God and also helping others. And thank you just to everyone who has helped me and will continue to help me on this journey. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome, Max. Thank you to all the confirmands. I know how much teenagers love being recorded on video and standing up in front of church, and you're welcome. All right. Uh, today, uh, our scripture will come from Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through 3. I'm Pastor Catherine. Um, Andy and I are married. We're both the pastors here, and I get to share our scripture. So brothers and sisters, because of God's mercy, I encourage you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice that is holy and pleasing to God. This is your appropriate priestly service. Don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you can figure out what God's will is, what is good and pleasing and mature. Because of the grace that God gave me, I can say to each one of you, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Instead, be reasonable, since God has measured out a portion of faith to each one of you. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. Amen. Will you guys bow with me? God, we thank you so much for, uh, for being present here with us. We thank you for, uh, we thank you for your love. Uh, I thank you especially today for, uh, for our kids who went through confirmation here. Uh, God, I pray that uh, as we spend a little time in your word and thinking about the call that you have in our lives, um, God, that we would sense your spirit here with us. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> I do see also, fair warning, uh, Gene, I guess, I'm guessing this is Gene, there's a Kleenex here, <laughs> uh, because even when I preached this sermon when you guys weren't in the room, I got a little misty, so, okay. Uh, today is Confirmation Sunday. We have a group of nine people here at the Bonner Springs United Methodist Church, uh, and one from Edwardsville who went through this program. All ten of them decided they wanted to profess their faith and become full members of the church this morning. Ten young people making a decision for faith. And I told these students several times, your parents might be able to force you to come to confirmation classes. Did anybody's parents force them to come? Anybody? Oh, they're all being polite in church. No, no, no hands raised. <laughs> Even though your parents can force you to come to confirmation classes, they can't force you to get confirmed. That's actually really important. It's important that your parents can't force you to do it, right? Uh, Catherine had a meeting with the parents up front, and she told the parents, you guys can't force your kids to get confirmed. I told the kids, if your parents are trying to bully you into get confirmed, <laughs> come talk to me and I'll set them straight, okay? It is important, right, that this is your yes. You have a choice to say yes or no, because your yes doesn't mean much unless you have the opportunity to say no. So these young people are going to stand before you today. <laughs> Who said no? <laughs> Somebody's using their voice out there. Way to go. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> From what I heard, it doesn't sound like that's a voice quite ready for confirmation age anyway. So maybe a couple years will let you warm up to the idea. Uh, uh, to those on the live stream who didn't hear, there was a, a child yelling no in the, in the crowd. So... Um, uh, these young people, though, here are going to stand before you today and stand before God today and say, yes, 
But I do have a quick question for you guys, uh, and I'm talking to you students who are getting confirmed this morning. Uh, why the heck are you doing this? <laughs> why are you doing this? It's kind of crazy. This being confirmed is a very weird decision to make at this point in our world today. A hard decision, and a hard decision for so many reasons. There are so many reasons why someone might not want to get confirmed now. Compelling reasons to say no instead of yes. First off, the church, this thing that you guys are like joining today formally, has gotten and deserved a lot of bad press over my lifetime. Not this congregation, the church in general. The church has often been labeled as an anti-science, closed-minded, politically polarized, petty, moralistic, freedom-stealing, doubt-avoidant entity. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Is that what you guys want to join? And it's been labeled those things in many cases because it's deserved those labels. It's earned them. In fact, I almost lost my faith because of some of these labels. <laughs> when my faith became all about a list following moral rules, I got filled with shame when I couldn't meet all of those rules. In fact, it impacted me and my relationships profoundly. At another time, when my faith became indistinguishable from my political ideologies, I ended up growing profoundly disillusioned with my faith, so much so that I began not even to see a path forward in faith. For the record, this happened to me in two separate seasons in life, one for each of the major two political parties in America. <laughs> I've, I've run the gamut of Christianity here in America. That's great. Uh, another time, when my faith became about reading the Bible so rigidly, literally, that I had to ignore my own conscience and betray my own upper-level reasoning, I felt like I was going to get crushed to death between a rock and a hard place, trying to hold on to my faith desperately. When I tried to set aside those doubts and just believe a little harder, even when I knew things weren't lining up, I was on track for complete spiritual meltdown. And honestly, for those reasons and many more, I did reach a full spiritual faith meltdown pretty spectacularly. And honestly, it was the best thing that ever happened to my faith. The be unexpectedly, the best thing that ever happened to my faith. Although, needless to say, it didn't feel real fun at the time. All that to say... Sometimes saying yes to faith involves saying no to certain things that you thought were a part of faith, maybe even things you thought were essential to your faith. Sometimes saying yes to God is being on a path filled with doubt and mistakes and falling flat on our faces. That journey of figuring out the difference between what things should be a part of your faith and those things you need to let go of that will hopefully be a lifelong process for you and for all of us here. And it is especially important that you do that work, that you don't shy away and be afraid of doubt and going through that process so you can figure out how to live into a faith that isn't the anti-science, closed-minded, politically polarized, petty, moralistic, freedom-stealing, doubt-avoidant endeavor that it is so often feared to be. So, Saying yes to confirmation today means you are possibly signing up for a lifetime of fighting those stereotypes, both internally and in public perception. Which brings me back again to my original question. Why the heck are you doing this today? Why are you getting confirmed? Because guess what? The next two points in my sermon, it just gets worse and worse, okay? Even if you are able to get rid of all of that baggage associated with the faith, what faith really actually is, is maybe even more of a reason not to just jump into this thing unaware. Holding on to a real, committed, even baggage-free faith, if that were such a thing, means that you'd still have to stand up for something that's a truth claim, right? And that's a pretty countercultural, difficult thing sometimes. In a world where truth is often seen as relative, you are making a decision today to say, yeah, maybe a lot of stuff really is relative, and it is, I think. Maybe even most stuff is a matter of perspective, but 
I actually believe, I have faith that God is ultimately and actually true. Yet truth is defined by God and not by any blowing social winds or modern trends. That God's truth isn't dependent on my belief or anyone else believing it. Let that sit in for a second. That's, that's not a given. That's what you guys are going to stand up here and say today. Now, to some of you out there who've grown up with a dogmatic faith like I did, that might sound like kind of a low bar, like believing in God to get confirmed, like, yeah, okay, that's, that's, that's a given, right? But I assure you, that's really a big deal to be able to stand up here and say that and to affirm that. It's a decision and an idea that these kids are making that many of them are going to have to continue to grapple with throughout their lives because it's not an easy belief to hold anymore. It takes nuance and courage and the creative, generative power of the Holy Spirit to hold on to these beliefs specifically in a way that will give life and bring good news to your peers. It's a hard thing to do, but I believe it's worth it, and I believe you guys are up for the challenge. So let's keep working at it together, guys. You, confirmands, you are the church. As of today, in just a few minutes, you are just as much members of this church as any person you see sitting in this room. You have the same voting power they have. You have the same voice in every meeting and everything that goes on here. That matters. Use it. Use it. You also, along with that power, great, with great power comes great response. You have the responsibility, right? Which brings me to my final and most convincing point in the what the heck are you thinking category. Someone must have told you at some point, right, that it's a lot easier just not to be a person of faith. Do you know how much effort it will always take in your life for you to try to submit to a higher ideal? Something beyond yourself to be a person who reads the words of Jesus and who says, you know what, I think I want to be more like that guy. Because on the surface we think, oh, Jesus is nice, but if you actually think about it, it's kind of a crazy thing. I want to follow the example of a guy who was equal with God, who had everything he could ever want, right? The cushy corner office in heaven. Then who gave up everything so he could come down as a baby and poop himself, right? A helpless baby that grew into a fringy rabbi, a fringy rabbi who became one of the most challenged and hated guys around, one of the most challenged and hated guys around who then ended up dying for what he believed. Great choice in role models, kids. You're committing to follow the example of the one who lifted up as virtues, weakness, and humility, and brokenness. One who dished out an incredibly unattainable seeming moral standard to follow. A guy who said things like, you've heard it said not to kill people. I say don't even dwell on those hateful thoughts. Don't even scratch that itch even when it feels good. He said, you said, you, you've heard it said that you shouldn't commit adultery. I say, don't even make people into objects in the life of your mind. He's holding us to a different kind of a moral standard. Also, by the way, he adds these little gems like, sell everything you own and give your money to the poor. Or turn your world around you upside down to make things more cosmically right. No, Jesus didn't dwell on petty moralisms just give lists of how to control and line up your behavior for no reason. In so many ways, it would have been easier if that's what Jesus would have done. Jesus chronically pissed off the people who were great at following rules, at doing the right thing, at making boring, restrictive lists. Jesus blew all of that up. No more dietary restrictions, no need for the customs that fueled the religious machine, no circumcision or sacrifice needed. Everything is good and clean. Oh yeah, but also look deep down in your heart because God wrote God's own law there. Listen to the prompting of God's spirit that God put in your innermost being. Humble yourself enough to not let your ego drown out that voice and follow that call that's in you and the deepest part of you to its craziest and most radical conclusions that God leads you to. Because written on your heart is something amazing. 
God's very image in you, the image of a God who took on flesh and gave up everything. Yeah, don't worry about lists of rules. Just give up everything in pursuit of self-sacrificing love for your neighbor. You today, in confirmation, you're saying yes to this, right? It's a different kind of a thing that you're saying yes to. Saying yes to that call. The same call that anyone out here who's been baptized or confirmed said yes to. Anyone rethinking the whole confirmation thing? <laughs> Some of you out there might have been, who, is anybody confirmed 60 years ago or more out there? Okay, I see a few... <laughs> I see a few hands, including somebody in their uh, 30s, maybe. So, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, maybe even those of you who were confirmed 60 years ago might be rethinking your call the con- that you took in confirmation, right? <laughs> this all sounds a little intense, right? It might sound like a bad idea the way that I just put it. What could possibly make all of this a worthwhile endeavor? With all of the above said, with that booming full disclosure out there, I can tell you without even hesitating that I think this decision you guys are making today, this yes that you confirmands are saying, has the potential to be the best, most important decision that you could ever make. Really. My faith, as confused and bumpy and crazy as it has been, has been the single most important thing in my life. It's given my life meaning. It's given me not only a motivation to be a better friend and citizen and a better husband and dad, but it's given me a framework and a community that has helped me along the way as I've been trying to strive towards those things. And hey, listen, a lot of you guys know me And you know, I still have a really long way to go in that. I don't even claim to be particularly good at those things. I'm falling so short of so much of this stuff every day. But if I were to tell you to emulate me in anything, which is something that I don't do very often, tell you to emulate me, but if I was about anything, it would be to stay engaged with God. Try to stay humble, Try to keep learning and growing. Try to keep seeing Christ in one another. I hope and pray that your lives will be filled with these things. Because in some surprise twist, in those things is the path to deeper meaning. In those things is the path to abundant life, the very thing God created you for. Today, in your confirmation, you're not standing up here and saying that you have everything figured out in faith. Right? You don't have to say that. Not saying that you could write a perfect systematic theology or give the Charles Grant level lecture on church history that you received a few weeks ago in your confirmation class. <laughs> Charles, it looked kind of like a, like a crazy person went in the woods and wrote it like a manifesto. It was like 12 pages, single space, like... <laughs> Uh, church history, uh, more in depth than anything I got in seminary. So (laughs) when you stand up here, you're not saying that you'll live a life without doubt or struggle or even without long, cold seasons of disbelief. Been there, friends, been there. You're not saying that you aren't going to screw up in life, that you won't fall into harmful patterns that bring pain to other people's lives and to yours that bring you to your very knees sometimes. Christians aren't immune to any of that. (laughs) There's a whole room full of people who can testify to that sitting here. Today in confirmation, you are simply saying the yes that you have the power to say today. (laughs) Saying yes to where God is calling you right now. But that's all any of us ever really have. (laughs) And what is our life? Besides the unexpected paths, that happenstance and providence, and these small yeses or noes take us on. So today, take the pressure off. You don't have to have everything figured out. You just have to fall a little deeper into the rhythm that God is calling you into. Easy enough, right? But also, today, feel the weight of the decision you're making. 
Because God has put a call in your life. Actually, God has actually gifted you and uniquely called you. Cam, this is a part I'm going <laughs> to struggle through. <laughs> Cam, God has given you a pure heart and a gift for wanting to fix stuff. God is going to use that gift to make the world better. God will use your loyalty and your good humor to make the lives of those closest to you always better. I believe that. Isabel? Where are you, Isabel? Hi. <laughs> God has given you the gift of faith. Your life will be guarded and guided by that gift. When others falter, God will guard your steps. Your paths will be made straight and your life secure. Max, identify yourself when I call your names. Thank you. <laughs> God has given you insight, and creativity, and passion, all in full measures. God has given you a voice. Keep exploring. Keep using that voice to build God's kingdom. Be a prophet. Nate's not here, but I'm going to say his anyway. Nate, God has given you a vision of what your life could be and a drive to work towards that with everything you have. Continue using your gifts for good and for the love of others. Ben, God has put such goodness in you. God will fill your life with good relationships and bless everyone around you with your love. There aren't too many things in life more important than that. Cole, God has given you all kinds of charisma and leadership abilities, and I am excited to see what you continue to play with all of those gifts. I'm, I'm excited to see you continue to play with all those gifts and to watch them flourish in your life. There is huge potential to be unlocked in those and in you. Nick, I think that God... <clears throat> mm. I think that God put a heart of pure gold in you. You have an infectious joy, and I feel blessed every time I'm with you. God's going to use you, my man. You're so good. Olivia, first off, you're hilarious. <laughs> That really sneaked up when I didn't, I, you were in sixth grade, and I was like, who is this squirrely kid? Uh, but man, you're so funny. I don't know how you continue to catch me off guard, both with your humor and your insights on things, but the world is your oyster. Keep on the path, friend. I truly believe you're just going to keep surprising us. Justin? Hey, Justin. Hey, Justin. Speaking of hilarious, right? Before I really got to know you, your mom told me what a goofball you were. <laughs> and honestly, that's a point that's a little hard to oversell. <laughs> God will use your good humor, but also God will use that spark you have, that creativity and drive and courage to make a mark. Alex, man, I believe you'll accomplish anything you want in this life. You're driven, you're smart, full of gifts both academically and with people. There is so much in you that God can use to change this world. Don't forget that. Never take it for granted. Miss anybody? Okay, good. <laughs> Love you, babe. <laughs> All of you. I am so proud of you and impressed by you. I'm honored that you've said yes to this this morning that you're making this decision to share your gifts with this church and community. God will use this yes this morning and your continued yeses to bring so much good into this world and into this faith community to help heal people and to make their lives better. This will be a process of you learning how to receive God's love and share it with others. And there's nothing more important in life. This call we before you each day as it is before all of us each day. So who this morning is ready to say yes? I'm going to invite you guys up.
So for those of you who need a bit of a refresher about how this works, which is including a lot of the parents who are here and myself, so in the Methodist church, we baptize at any point, but a lot of these kids have been baptized as infants or along their faith journey at some point. And um, today they're standing up and confirming. They're saying, as young people, I'm ready to confirm my faith. I'm ready to take it on as my own. But some of these kids, uh, we always baptize anywhere along the road, so they're going to be baptized today before they confirm that decision. So they get a, a two-part uh, little celebration today, and I think they're all setting an awesome example for us, um, and that many of us haven't um, been baptized before, um, and many of us haven't had the chance to confirm our faith, but in the church you can do that any week you want. So if you guys ever are thinking, uh, whatever age kid you have or whatever age adult you are, if you think you're ready for baptism to say yes, the yes that these kids are saying, um, we're ready to do that. And also uh, for parents uh, and other adults, you can also remember your baptism. That's another ceremony we offer. So if you've been through a tough season of life, but maybe watching you, these kids come to their faith is, is challenging you, uh, we also do a, a remember your baptism service. And so just let us know if you guys have any needs uh, in that way along the road. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with two baptisms. So I'm going to invite um, the baptism parents to come forward and stand behind uh, their kiddos. So Nick will be baptized today and also Cole will be baptized. Would you guys mind coming forward? Everyone else in the congregation, I'm going to ask you guys to get out this book behind your pew uh, and you're going to turn to page 33. Awesome. If I have a parent who is willing to help me, um, could you guys bring a few of those up for our confirmands as well so they can join us in reading this? Oh, thank you, yeah. There, uh, there are some in the library if there aren't enough in the pews, so. Uh, so the way uh, this liturgy is structured, it's actually really handy, is the confirmation liturgy is a part of the baptismal liturgy. So uh, all the questions that I ask are going to all of you guys up here, okay? Uh, all of you being baptized and confirmed. So, um, but first, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared in our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Today, I get to present these lovely people for both baptism and confirmation. And I will start by presenting Nicholas Burning for baptism and also Cole Kielman for baptism. And for, or, or for confirmation today, these two will also be confirmed, but uh, adding to the list of those being confirmed, Olivia Beats and Alexander Conrad, Isabel Douglas, Max Fager, Cameron Jago, Justin Corgel, and Benjamin Schaefer. So I'm going to look right now um, to those who are being baptized. That's you two. And for everyone else here in the church, I want to ask you guys this. On behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? It, I do. Perfect. If you do say, I do. Perfect. Okay, you guys are all going to answer these, all right? The next question, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. And we all are awesome. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. Perfect. 
According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If you will, say, I will. I will. Wonderful. And now this is to all of you out here. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And you can follow along in the bowl. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons before you now in your care? Claim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they will be made true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his work to all the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin and clothe them in your righteousness throughout their lives that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Nick and Cole, I invite you guys up. We'll start with you, Nick. I'm going to ask you to kneel right here, and I'm actually going to have your parents come and stand right behind you, if that's okay. Now, I don't get to do teenage baptism as often as I like. Um, Normally, I get babies and they're crying. So hopefully, we'll see how you do. I think you can handle it. (laughs) Nicholas David Burning, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Nick, with this oil, I anoint you in the sign of the cross as a reminder that God's Holy Spirit is in you and with you and gives you the power you need to live this life faithfully. Amen. Now, Mr. Cole. Cole Williams James Keelman. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
And with this oil, I anoint your head in the sign of a cross as a reminder that God's Holy Spirit is in you and at work within you and will give you the power you need to live by faith. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our new brothers in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood we are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Amen. All right. Now, if you are a parent or a mentor of the other kids up here who are about to get confirmed, if you want to come and try to stand behind them as best as you can, <laughs> that would be fabulous. Um, Confirmands, you will still need your books out for this part, okay? You want to turn to your hymnals. Awesome. A great group. Confirmands, remember your baptism and be thankful, to which you say, Amen. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to have, um, I have helpers here, so I'll explain to you what's going to happen. So I'm going to have Andy hold this and read our names for us. And I'm going to have these two special ladies um, who have been a big part of these kids' lives. They've either grown up in the church or they've been their teacher uh, from the time they were little, Miss Lauren and Miss Madison. Miss Madison works with youth and grew up in the church, and Miss Lauren has worked with these kids uh, from the time they were little. I'm going to have them come up. Um, when each kid comes up, if, if you will, um, they're going to come and stand behind them and pray over them as well, uh, pray that short little blessing, and then... Confirmands, we're going to do something a little different today. Uh, Andy and I never are fancy schmancy. Whoops. See, I dropped fancy schmancy things. But uh, we're actually going to wear these, which are called stoles. And they don't mean anything, like, magical. Um, but when you uh, wear the, the red stole, it's a reminder of the Holy Spirit. And so when we pray on you, you're going to feel um, the weight of both these teachers' hands and also our stoles on your shoulders. And those are a reminder of like the weight of following Jesus, of the responsibility you guys are taking on as teenagers, um, which is a really, really cool one. Um, and so when you guys feel that, just a reminder of what's going on. <laughs> uh, we just want you guys to know what that means. Awesome. Right. So we'll go ahead and start with our gentlemen who were baptized. Absolutely. Nicholas, step on up, my man. Right here. And... Nick, awesome. Mom and dad, mentor. You guys can all hold on. Perfect. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> Just teasing you. All right. Nicholas David Burning. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water in the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Cole? We'll just go in order. You guys are standing, so... Cole Williams James Keelman, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water in the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Olivia, parents, mentors, please come on up. Olivia and Beats, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Benjamin James Schaefer. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Justin Lee Corgill, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Isabel Adlin Douglas, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Max Jordan Fager, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Alexander Edward Conrad, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Cameron Joseph Jago, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Awesome. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. And, uh, I just wanted to say yeah. a quick word, if that's okay, to parents. We love you. Thank you for sticking with your kids. To confirmands, whether you had you were dragged to confirmation or not, thank you for coming and trying to listen to your parents, or maybe you made it all by yourself. And thank you for making this choice by yourself. That's a witness to everybody that's here. And then to mentors, um, I'm just so thankful for you guys. We have Jeff, will you just wave real quick when I Call your name. Bob has been a mentor. Matt Beats mentored too. Bonnie has been a mentor. Dorothy Clam has been a mentor. Rachel has served as a mentor. Matt has served as a mentor. Are there any men? Auntie was a mentor this season. Anybody else? Awesome. So these kids uh, came to us and said that these are some of the people that they would like to be their mentors. Just a reminder that. They're always watching you guys, and it doesn't matter uh, your age uh, or what you think your cool factor may or may not be. Uh, they're looking up to you guys as examples in faith. Uh, so just we're thankful for you guys for, for serving in that capacity. Uh, and now is where uh, you guys are getting received into the Methodist Church and in this local congregation. So, uh, as members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say I will. I will. And now, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. I will. 
And now, members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect your love in them. We give thanks... Amen. Uh, your last job, guys, is to uh, shake hands and go have some refreshments. But uh, we're, we're, wait till the end of the service. Uh, you guys are done up here. Thank you. So give these guys a hand. Welcome to the church. Parents, I don't mean to terrify you, but they say it goes fast. <laughs> the next big I do's that come in the church, those will be the scary ones. All righty. Uh, once they get back to their seats, I'm going to have you guys join us. We're going to sing our second hymn, which was, I was there to hear your morning cry. Please rise. You guys can be seated. Uh, there's a reason we put uh, confirmation on a chief's bye week. <laughs> Service runs a little longer than normal. Sorry, uh, uh, but we, we, we're gonna we're gonna pit fast forward on the last part of the service. Uh, a prayer request: the only one that uh, that we have really this week to share. A lot of you guys know the Reamers, uh, Willard and Wilberta. Uh, Wilberta had a fall last week. She's been in the hospital and now is uh, home on hospice. Uh, likely, uh, sh she'll be uh, passing sometime in the next uh, couple of days. So uh, keep Willard uh, and the whole. Reamer family in your prayers right now. Um, but I was thinking so much about, uh, about the Reamers. Uh, they've been married 68 years. Uh, uh, they're, they're in their 90s, and uh, they have lived such good, long, holy lives. And um, as, as we're thinking about uh, Wilberta passing on from this life, uh, it leaves a big hole in this community. Um, and we have uh, a group of people here who just became members who have such gifts um, 
to leave your mark on this place too. So uh, I'm going to say a quick prayer and then we're going to sing our closing song. God, be with us today um, as we grow, God, in your grace as, uh, as this church here. I pray that you bless each and every one of our confirmands, bless us as a congregation through their gifts and help us um, continue to be there and support them and love them and mentor them through this uh, as we're learning from them <laughs> and they're helping grow us too. Uh, God, for the Reamer family and all of those who are um, suffering right now or who uh, just see loss in their lives, be with them. And for those of us celebrating God, celebrate with us. Uh, we thank you and we love you. Amen. Uh, to close off, we have one of my very favorite hymns. It's all a hymn. It's a hymn all about like God calling us and us saying, here I am, Lord, us giving our yeses. So I invite you to heartily sing with me our closing hymn, number 593, Here I Am, Lord.
Amen. Amen. What a good... Well, what, what a reason to celebrate today, really and truly. Uh, I'm so proud of our confirmands. Uh, great Sunday. A couple of points of housekeeping. We did not pass the plate today. Uh, I'm going to get in trouble with the finance committee. But, uh, <laughs> uh, if you, uh, no pressure, but if you do want to give to the church, there is an offering plate on your way out, on your right there. Uh, feel free to give if you want. Uh, we, we are trying to do good in the community, and, uh, and, and we always appreciate the help. So, um, Also, uh, on a slightly uh, more fun note, there's like a bunch of uh, uh, refreshments in the hallway. So uh, go shake the hands of, of the confirmands and, uh, and go eat and celebrate with them. Uh, receive now our benediction. God, uh, as we go forth from this place, uh, give us the courage to say yes when you call us. God, through that, let us be changed so we can go out and change the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Halloween.